Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to Mojir Round. Welcome back to some more World Series 2022. We're back at you today with round number one. And down in the south, we have a guy called Molière. And he is playing with the blue USA Air Force. We haven't casted much of him on this channel before. I believe like maybe a couple of replays here and there. Maybe one, maybe, maybe two. Up in the top right, today facing him, we have the USA Laser with the orange color which is Vector. Uh, yeah, he used to go by the name Dense, but he has changed his name now to Vector. Opening up here with a double barracks as he was a uh, laser. Definitely up against it. Being up against Air Force is a very, very tough uh, ask indeed. I like the uh, Chinooks collecting on the different crates there. Really, really like it. Uh, yeah, you're expecting a 1-1 start here, just based on the on the armies. But, we could definitely be wrong. Could be uh, could be an upset incoming. I actually don't know who to pick between these players, to be honest. Uh, I'm leaning to... If I was to bet money on it, I'm leaning towards Molière. That's where I'd be leaning, but yeah, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. We've got a drop here coming in from Vector. As the laser, you do want to be doing some kind of aggression. If you just sit back, let the Air Force build up, get some King Raptors, you will be in very big trouble indeed. Instant laser lock comes in on the dozer, takes an awful lot of damage and goes uh, goes down. Molière yeah, thinking about engaging this, I personally would pull all of the Chinooks, not just two. Because one of the Chinooks, or at least one or two Vs, might go down. But saying that, he's lost one Chinook and managed to clear up five MDs. Not perfect handling. I think that was possible to clear that up with taking zero damage if you'd have pulled all of the Chinooks. Because if you think about the options, the options are lose one Chinook or just lose a bit of mining time on all four Chinooks. Now, which one would you prefer? I personally would prefer not to give away the XP, not to give away the economic damage, lose a little bit of mining time for a second, and then put them back. Almost instantly, because as soon as you've killed a few MDs, you don't really need four there anymore. He's sending one V back, but three Vs actually across the map. Oil cap is coming in there from Vector. Looks like he's only going to get uh, two oil caps. But there are Vs all over the place inside of the base. Plus the Chinook is being brought in as well. Lays lock everywhere. The Chinook looks like it will go down, but is the V going to be able to clear up the ground? Before then, we've got one oil captured, two oils captured. But yeah, this uh, means a lot, actually, these Vs here in the base, because if you manage to camp the barracks now, it's not really going to be able to do much else. He's dropping down another barracks. He's got another barracks over here, but not captured that oil. There is a V there. The MDs are still running around in the base. One power plant did already go down. This V's getting some veterancy, so going to be harder to kill. You don't need that Chinook there anymore. Probably. Unless you're going to go and pull it over here. But actually, we've got a combat Chinook from Molière as well, just to finish the job. But these uh, missile defenders are actually causing a lot of damage. There's a lot of Chinooks gone down this game. Yeah, that's a hell of a lot of Chinooks gone down now. Only one remains for Molière in his main base, but he also has one. In the opponent's base, Lays Lock comes in on the V. Not sure what that V was shooting at. Maybe it was that MD. But he went down in the end anyway. But the combat Chinook just flying around. Finishing off a ton of stuff. Not sure if he's got ranges in there as well. Maybe he does. The barracks is now getting hit. This dozer still exists, so down in the bottom right. Can't hear an all getting capped. Another V gets Lays Locked. Omashinu continues to fly around. I think, all things considered, Vector actually did quite a good job here. He made it extremely painful for the Air Force, losing a hell of a lot of Chinooks and a lot of these. Uh, the, the laser is still wrecked and doesn't have very much, but also the Air Force doesn't have very much, and it shouldn't be going that close. So I think actually Vector might take some confidence away from this, even though it looks like Looks like you might lose. Yep. Yeah. And there we go. 1-0-4. Molière. Okay, jumping into game number two. This time we have Vector down in the bottom left with the USA Air Force in the orange color. 
All the way up at the top right, we have Molière with the blue USA laser. So, yeah, um... Definitely don't think the Air Force should be losing that much stuff. I think the, all the way from the initial drop, that could have been handled better. Um, but still, regardless of how you get the win, Moliere is already 1-0 up. In his round number one of the World Series, is exactly where you want to be. But is he going to be able to make that a 2-0 here? It's going to be a, um, a big ask again. One dozer, three MDs, so it's a slightly different drop. He's messed this up a little bit. Could have been a couple of seconds faster. The trick is there, by the way, it's very simple. You want to wait until all your MDs are fully out of the barracks and stationary and then click in the snook. If he's still coming out of the barracks when you click it in, it messes up. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened there, but either way, it did, uh, did get messed up. Okay, so going to be a laser patriot. If he just gets a Hellfire drone on that, then this V will be stopped. But thankfully, though, he has dropped the three MDs. To protect it against the V, but it was one MD brought, and the dose has not been brought round the back. Bad control there by Molier. You could have moved it around the back. I'm not saying it would have survived, but it had a, a, a better chance. Because actually, look, it's pretty low. So if you'd moved it around the back and protected it a second, there's a chance that could have got up, and it actually could have uh, put you in a good, a good position uh, to try and win this. We've got a V here from Vector entering the main base. It's even got one MD in there. It's going to be annoying for them Chinooks, but it actually looks like he's got no MD, but he's actually pulled all of his Chinooks anyway. What the hell is Moliere doing? Oh, it's because the, the toe upgrade has just come into play. But he pulled them all in advance of that. Like, it was a little bit strange in my my, in my view. You can even just let him collect for a while, even while uh, taking shots from the, from the toe. Because the toe doesn't kill him that quick, you can you can maybe collect another two little drop offs, something like that. But anyway, this one's got MDs inside of it. Anyway, laser lock comes in. The Chinook's movement now is uh, non-existent. He's still happy to just leave that missile defender there, but that missile defender isn't actually laser locking anyway. V now going to camp the barracks. That Chinook cannot go back there because there's another toe V there. MDs there got cleared up. Are they the same ones that were there from before? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And maybe they've killed one Chinook as well, because one Chinook looks, looks to be missing. Blaze Lock comes in again on this Chinook. Looks like it will go down before... Oh, yeah, the Ranger just kills it, but the last shot had already been fired, and that Chinook goes down. Got a Chinook just idle here. It has got something inside of it. A load of infantry. Is he going to go for the Dozer kill? Dropping a little bit too close to the dozer for my comfort there, because if he was paying attention, he could have reversed the dozer and crushed your full drop. Hey, laser lock comes in on the V, gets one. Barely gets any damage on the second one. Another drop over here, going for the dozer. He's going to get it, but I mean, it's concerning, but it's not too concerning when you lose your those like that because you've still got two supplies, War Factory Barracks and and the power plant. Probably if that dozer survived, he probably isn't going to have much more than that anyway. He might drop down a firebase, might drop down an airfield, and later on he might drop down a strat. But for the next few minutes, probably the game is still going to be mostly the same. In fact, the Air Force is now probably going to be even more aggressive, which so far the aggression has been working out quite nicely. Okay, nice laser locks there on the Vs. Another V there goes down. Another laser lock on this one. But again, he's camping the uh, the Chinooks. One Chinook over on the top right is very, very low. This one's taking a lot of damage as well. Nice movement there behind the barracks. Missile defenders here. I don't even know what they're chasing. They're chasing this V, but that V's just going to clear them up, I'm pretty sure. Getting veterans on there as well. That V finally got laser locked. There's a missile defender here now, but that V seems to have gone. Was that V over there? The same one there. I wasn't paying attention fully. <laughs> but another Chinook there goes down. He's only collecting on one Chinook now, Molière.
Okay, Liz Lock comes in on the V. That's the strongly vetted V as well. Or the highly vetted V, rather. But there's just Vs everywhere at this point, and he's only got this one Chinook. Just needs one tap in. And then he's on absolutely no collection. So it's all right having the best laser locks in the world. But if you've got no income whatsoever, the Air Force is on three Chinooks over here, one Chinook over here. Could have three over here. It would be better. But either way, I think the Air Force has clearly won this. In fact, Blue's Hunter has got no power, got no barracks, and that is it. Yeah, 1-1 one, one, as expected with the USA Air Force against lasers. Not impossible for the laser. There is always, where well, there's a will, there's always a way. But... uh yeah, sometimes. More, more often than not, it's going to be a 1-1 one, one matchup. So, yeah, 1-1 one, one is the score. Okay, jumping into game number three. Down in the south, we have Vector with the China Infantry in the orange. All the way up in the north, we have Moliere with the blue China Vanilla. Uh, is it winnable both ways? Um, I mean, at the very top level, I would probably say... That China has a chance, but it's quite slim. You're probably looking at another one-one matchup because the uh, the double war factory build of the China infantry often just over overruns the China vanilla. But Vector is actually going for something very, very different. He's going for an aggressive war factory as the China infantry, which I can't remember the last time I saw that actually. But really it could be genius because you're expecting the china vanilla to play quite passive probably by going mix probably like three supplies barracks mix something like that but actually moliere has gone for war factory barracks he's actually scouted the sneaky war factory and he, he is going mix but if that's a flamer straight out of there it might cause problems Okay, it is a Flamer. Taking out all of these tank hunters, but there's also a counter Flamer here from Moliere. A lot of tank hunters were killed in the making of this specific replay. There is now a... Oh... Oh, yeah, there is an outpost. Okay, the outpost is out. I thought he sold it before it spawned, but yeah, of course it spawned because I saw the speaker tower thing. So yeah, Flamer's killing the war factory, and that Flamer there from uh, Moliere is going down. So really... I quite like that position there for the infantry. This dose has also apparently survived. It's actually just made its way further around this mountain. I, I like this from Vector, really. Mixing things up. I don't know if it's necessary as the infantry. Maybe it's a little bit more risky. But, uh, yeah. He probably thought that the China infantry, the China vanilla was going to play campy. And he thought, you know what? I'm going to counter it with an aggressive wolf factory. So yeah, I like uh, I like creative plays. Okay, Truck's getting hit over here. We actually do have a Helix out from Molia. He's got four tank enters in there so far. And he's going to use that to, first of all, kill this barracks. But a lot of people say you can use that to pop open the outposts. And then once the outposts are popped open, you can use a Flamer or whatever from your War Factory to clear that up. This Helix is taking damage, though. The Trucks are taking damage. And it's pretty much... I'm getting deja vu from the last replay. Where Moliere is just getting harassed so much. Has this Helix died? Like, I don't know why that Helix was prioritizing killing that Dozer in the barracks. The priority was to protect your trucks. Even now, like, that, that one tank into there should have been cleared up. Even if it means risking. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, man. You yeah, nicely enjoy. played there from Vector. Uh, but yeah, some questionable decisions. I'd definitely be protecting those trucks um, as a priority, especially when you've got a big expensive unit flying around and this is a Helix. But ki killing that barracks there and then was not a priority. Sure, more tank enters or a minigun or whatever is going to come from it, but worry about that later. The priority was to protect your trucks. Okay, jumping into game number four. Yeah, a little bit funky, that uh, replay. I did not expect an aggressive war factory from the Inf. Very, very uh, strange. I, I think either one of two things. Either Vector, that replay, is inexperienced and doesn't really understand the true strengths of Inf about... You don't need to take a risk like that. Like an aggressive war factory if it gets scouted. If it gets scouted, like it almost... Well, it actually did get scouted. Arguably, Moliere could have dealt with it a little bit better. But yeah, if it gets scouted, it can completely backfire and you can end up losing the game very quick. Or... 
Vecta was thinking really intelligently that, hang on a minute, China's going to play a very, very passive. We'll do an aggressive warfare. Actually, there's no way he's going to see it. Uh, yeah, I personally, upon reflection, I don't think it's that strong because more often than not, than not the China Vanilla is probably going to make a tank and to send it to the mid and that war factory might not even get up actually. So yeah, <laughs> leaning towards that. Anyway, we've got Vector now playing with the China Vanilla up in the north. We saw the frenzy used on him from Moliere. So whatever build order Vector is going for has been revealed. But Moliere now have only vet one minigunners. That's because he's took the frenzy. This tank into here is going to get found. And over on the right-hand side, we've got an aggressive dozer again from Vector. Actually, aggressive dozer meets aggressive dozer on the right-hand side. A little bit of an awkward situation. Moliere going to drop down a barracks first. Flame ahead into the mid. Vector's gone for the oil cap. Mm. I think the oils here are kind of hard to get. Because they're, like, quite open in the middle. Quite hard to protect. So if he doesn't capture them, that's quite a lot of money invested into the capture upgrade. But if he, if he, I mean, if he does get to capture him, then then yeah, fair enough. Aggressive war factory again from Vector. Okay, you gotta you gotta give the man props. He's trying, isn't he? He's trying. It doesn't get up. It keeps the infantry just distracted at least a little bit. Vector's now getting his trucks hit by an outpost straight down the middle of the map. Uh, it looks like one oil actually might be captured. Ooh, extremely close. Does not quite get captured. Tank enter tries to kill the MiG. The MiG survives. Outpost has gone down, but a TNT has now been planted on that truck. Vector has built a war factory over on the left-hand side. I would like him to get on a third. But I think he does need to pump a lot of money into units at the moment because this is quite a lot of aggression coming straight down the middle of the map in the form of outposts and infantry straight spam from the barracks. It makes come in, kill one of the outposts. I never said Mix come in, kill the minigunners. This is where the vet two minigunners might have come in handy, but the frenzy is also very nice. A big scout, I'm seeing, yeah. Big quick game so far. Four games in. You have been defeated. We've only been recording like what? Less than twenty minutes. Yeah, but there have been some imbalanced matchups, I suppose. Uh, so so far, yeah, the stronger general has won both times. Two two. We are at. Okay, jumping into the next match. Down in the south this time, we have the orange GLA Stealth, which is Vector. All the way up in the top right, we have a GLA Stealth mirror on our hands, actually. With the blue, and this is Molia. So yeah, it could be our first longer or long match since the start of this, because we've got a GLA mirror on quite a big map, quite some choke points. Choke points usually means defender's advantage. It's quite a bit of cash. You've got one oil there and one oil there. You could say that's on your side of the map that you probably would get, but want to fight over in the middle. But then you've got several supply crates here and several here as well. Let's just check it. A 3.75, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a nice map, this. If you look at, like, the... The rocks and the 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 sea floor here and everything. There's quite a lot of uh, detail gone into it. Made by TK Leo. It's a very nice map. I like the maps that are both a good design but also beautiful to look at, like beautiful colours and textures and the detail of trees and stuff like that. I like it. So we've got a beacon here from Moliere. Tunnel versus tunnel. I think his tunnel will win the engagement because it's up about 50% quicker. Maybe even 60% goes to work on it straight away and then starts dropping down. Also a second tunnel. Uh, Moliere choosing not to tunnel down uh, the south at all. And he's also stopped building his 75% tunnel. I don't know quite what he's doing there. He had a hell of a lot of workers on there for so early on in the game. And also he's just camping with his technicals. Yeah, like, ideally, the first thing I'll be thinking in a GLA mirror, get your supply going, get your arms dealer going, and as soon as that tentacle's out, race across the map and start killing workers. But just to camp there, I think he's he was looking for a TNT. I think that's what he was looking for. But I think the best way of stopping a TNT is actually with a tech RPG. So, yeah, pop, pop your RPGs from your technical as soon as it comes in and hit it. 
Just standing there with two technicals, I'm not convinced it's the best defense against it. Okay, he puts the workers back collecting. But most of the map control here has gone to Vector, apart from the top of the map. So Moliere's prioritized the top. Vector's prioritized the mid and the bottom right. Another technical enters the base of Moliere. And Vector's actually got himself a tunnel inside of Moliere's base. Moliere is not even opened with one oil. Don't know how much I agree with that. I think on these kind of maps, you want to, even like Sand Scorpion, you want to open with at least one oil. Two supplies, one oil tends to be the most popular build. Going a little bit close to this tunnel, but um, I think that Rebel will still survive. Palace already going up for Vector. He's only collecting on four workers there, where he before like, was like collecting on 92 workers. <laughs> Something stupid, <laughs> like straight from the beginning. Yeah, but I probably, I would rather too many workers rather than four. <laughs> okay, Moliere grabbing himself extra supplies. Vector pops one quad or two quads. Tox tunnel. The thing is there, he's revealed how much he's got in his tunnel now, which is like key information for Moliere. He'll be remembering that. But v Vector's just way ahead in map controller and... Uh, Also, the palace. He's grabbed himself an extra supply here. He is three oils up. But Moliere's one supply up. So, yeah, Moliere is uh, securing the full top. But actually, he's about to take a massive attack in the base. Big pop here from Vector. One of the tunnels there of Moliere goes down. Massive engagement. Quads and RPGs. Moliere trying to defend. But it looks like Vector is going to come out on top. And that is a bad position for Moliere to be in. Not only losing all of his army there, but he's also at risk of losing that barracks. And then from killing that barracks, you can then harass all of the workers there inside. RPGs here for Vector need to be better controlled than that. They're actually just going way too close to this tunnel. And getting killed. Moliere repops all of his stuff. And he's grabbing that oil there as well. I think Vector, even if he suicides one quad, can actually, well, maybe a little bit late now, could have popped it and run over that rebel. But it looks like Moliere is actually going to hold this and clears up everything inside of his base. Uh, Vector is on two arms dealers, dropping down a third, actually, and a market. Another supply going up for him as well. I think he could even drop another supply there, you know, to collect these crates even faster. I think it's probably, uh, probably worthwhile. Okay, quad push from Moliere now across the bridge into Vector's base. But Vector is already on buggies. He's going to use this to push this guy back. Hits the stealth tunnel. I think he saw it placed before it stealthed itself. A technical for Vector. Is this a misclick or is he going for some kind of a TNT? Looks like a misclick or a scout. But I mean, he already had that rebel there. Does he really need to scout? Is probably the question. Okay, Vector re establishing some defense for this uh, bridge area. It's got an another tunnel up. Black market established. Hope we see worker shoes some sometime soon. Molly well, yeah, putting some pressure on down in the bottom right and actually takes out one of the oils. The buggies go into work on these quads. They could chase these quads and get a few more kills, I'm sure. Vector apparently has a bit of work to do in terms of XP. He's actually behind in the XP. So actually hitting all of these quads, not such a bad idea. But this is the benefit of going palace so early. And Molly is only dropping down his palace now and floating 8k, by the way. I think if he's struggling there against the... Higher tech units, maybe some hijackers would be good. Definitely needs to try and establish some tunnels here, but it's going to be hard, especially when we can see this is Jarman Kell out now. He has got a hijacker, by the way. OK, 
Okay, big push here from Molly. Yeah, trying to gain some ground now in the middle. Remember on an earlier version of this map, the, the sneaky does this inside of those trees used to come out and start repairing that oil, and there's nothing you could do about it. You couldn't kill it. It was like a ghost dozer. Uh, buggies have now cleared one arms dealer and actually uh, they ran into a tunnel for, there for a second there. But Molière putting pressure on down the middle of the map. Is he going to be able to get in here? The palace is right there, but you might still be able to kill that oil. There's a bit of a gap here where you might be able to get something done. Buggy mistake there from Vector. Yeah, with only one RPG inside of here, I'm pretty sure he will be able to kill the oil. I would probably commit to that. He's going to end up losing some quads here anyway. I think he could have killed it. Um, yeah. We'll never know now. Molly well, actually floating 10k, so he's he's secured this for himself and collecting all the money, but he's not actually spending it. <laughs> he's building another arms dealer because one of them already got take, taken out. Hijacker comes in. Takes one of the buggies, they suicide themselves a little bit. Yeah, it's certainly interesting how both players prioritize different areas. Like Molière completely prioritized the top and secured both of them quite easily. Whereas Vector prioritized the middle and over here. I actually think the best strat is to do a balanced approach and to go for all of the areas. Sure, you might get kicked off one of them, but if you get kicked off one, make sure you secure the others. Because Vector didn't really tunnel this area at all from the beginning. I think he could be in a stronger position if he actually fought for that a little bit as well. Okay, a few hijackers here from Molière. Good to see Molière's actually spending his cash now. He's building a CC with 2k of that money, though, which he doesn't need to. He can cancel that scaffold to make more units. Because, let's face it, he does need more units right now because he's at risk of losing his entire base. He's already lost, like, nearly half of it. There is a Scud Storm now out for Vector as well. In the bottom of the map, he does have worker shoes. He has AP rockets as well, which I like. Palace is going to get hit, though. And with not many buggies out, you have to say, surely Molière is going to lose this because you can't let the opponent have such a big tech advantage for so much of the game. Hop here from Molière, trying to muster some kind of a defense, but there's even too many quads and too many buggies. I don't think Molière is going to be able to hold this. More quads, more tunnels going down. Another tunnel goes down. He's got AP ammo. He's got AP rockets and buggy ammo upgrade. Whereas Molière doesn't even have worker shoes. See, it's all about worker shoes. You get worker shoes, you win the game. And it certainly looks like Vector's going to win. We've got Molière here in the middle. He's actually collecting here right next to a tunnel. I don't know if that tunnel got deployed after or before. There's a stealth market here. I think he knows about that. Supplies actually getting hit first. I would like like him to prioritize killing that tunnel because he's going to lose a quad there and he probably didn't need to. Is that another buggy miscontrol there from Vector? I think it was. But the whole base there from Molière has been taken out. He's re-establishing himself um, up in the top left of the map. Vector just trying to completely clear this little uh, base at the top. I say little base, big base. Molière trying to put a bit of a fight for it. He's actually queued up some more buggies before we lost his palace, apparently. Unless he kept him hidden inside of his tunnel. But remember, that Skid Storm's going to fire in three minutes. It's going to become a hell of a lot harder. But John and Kel still here. Snipes one of the quads. One of the few units there of Molière. But yeah, Vector's had that oil and that oil since the beginning, whereas Molière had one oil. Did he have one oil for a bit and then he eventually got killed, I think? Yep. Okay, Molière trying to push. Push Vector back past this uh, supply line. Not working out for him. He's ended up losing ground himself. And in the end, he's actually going to be trapped just up in the top left. He's ha he has had these two massive supplies, but yeah, he's floating 12k again. Um, I think he's just waiting to queue up buggies. Yeah, he, he has just spent a ton of cash now, so I think he's queued up a ton of buggies. 
Uh, but the question is, is that too little too late? Got a few vet three buggies in here. Okay, Vector continues to squeeze Molière's map control now. If we look at Molière's map control, it is getting awfully low. If he gets that tunnel there cancelled, then yeah, he doesn't have much vision at all. In fact, his biggest forward position, or forward vision, let's say, is actually this stealth market that Vector apparently has forgotten about or didn't see. But Molière doesn't have any defense on this side and actually Vector is going to press in here as well forces the sale on that market Buggy's here now coming in from Molière up in the top, uh, top right he's trying to run over this worker but he's having a little bit of an issue finally gets it Vector really wants to kill this war factory it is being repaired but I think it's still going to go down especially like with the AP rockets Buggy's up in the top right Going to go to work on this supply, but going to go maybe a little bit close to that tunnel. Tunnel starts doing some damage. This attack will be stopped, but at what cost? He's lost his arms dealer and a market. Molly is still floating AK though, and Anthrax Bomb dropped on this bit of aggression here from Molly. Yeah, stopped himself from collecting Vector has, but does that matter? Because as, as long as you've stopped that aggression, you've got 90% map control now. You've got a Scud Storm going to fire in 11 seconds. And yeah, that's looking very grim there the for... Has been placed. Oh, what's the beacon? Okay, beacon here now. He's found it with the anthrax bomb. Yeah, Molly, uh, Gonna take a skid to the face any second now. Launch Where would you even fire it? Yeah, he's, he's fired it at the palace. I was gonna say you fire it probably at the palace. Of course, he's seen it because he had units there before. So, of course, he knows where that is. Skid storm rains down. Surely that is GG now. So many other games have been quit, maybe quitting a little bit premature. <laughs> but this one, yeah, I would quit because there's no coming back from that Skid Storm there to the you face. Are. And that was your only little uh, portion of the map that you had. So, uh, yeah, three, two, four, Vector. Okay, so I've got Vector now up in the top right with the Jilly Stealth in the orange. Down in the bottom left, I've got Molière with the blue Jilly Stealth in the... I said blue, I said blue. <laughs> okay, Vector going for a box on his main supply. I did think that was a bit of a gap. Oh, I don't know, man. I think it's about as close as it gets without an enemy tech getting in. I don't think an enemy unit can get through that, but I would not be leaving it. I would not be leaving it for a risk. I'm actually just looking at the pattern on some of these. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit uh, odd looking, so uh, Vector. With the tunnel in the middle again, he's just going to get the mid for free again. Molière seemingly not interested in uh, fighting very much the mid he's got a tunnel there of some kind but it's very late and it's very deep back uh, into his base but again though he has prioritized going up for the top left and you have to say there's more there's more money here you'd rather them two big supplies rather than one oil that could just get tnt or something um but uh, again vector's gone for a more balanced approach although i still would like a tunnel down here by the way at least a worker hiding in the trees ready to build a tunnel or something. Uh, I don't agree with just no worker anyway. You want a worker on every flank, just like you would see on a uh, Sand Scorpion. Tech, tech, tech RPG runs straight into a terrorist. The worker went down, but the scaffold did not. But these RPGs here from Vector are going to get completely stopped. Vector's grabbing himself an oil. Yeah, Vector has gone, f uh, apart from the missing worker here, which is about to die actually. That got brought in the technical. Uh, it's, it's a more balanced approach, which is the kind of approach that I, I like going for all of the flanks and, and the mid.
Okay, technical in the base of Moliere from Vector. Here's another gap, and that gap looks probably big enough. Yeah, really bad. Because <laughs> some of these gaps are big enough for an enemy technical, but not big enough for your own. Sometimes that does happen. I, I don't understand the game and how that happens exactly, but sometimes it can. But yeah, leaving a gap there is a bit unfortunate. RPG going to work on the supply, but it will get stopped. The workers here need to be rebuilt, and that supply could be dealing with a little bit closer. Uh, Moliere going for this position again, but Vector is kind of adapted. I feel like he's got better in this second game. Uh, he's realized what Moliere did last game, and actually he's gone for that balanced approach, but then also now winning this position as well. So he, he is really shutting the opponent out, and he's got two arms dealers here going as well, so he's going to have loads and loads of quads. Uh, I personally think, yeah, Vector's in a, in a really good position. He's got himself on this supply. He's got himself on that oil, that oil, that oil. So he's at a, a one oil advantage at the moment. One oil advantage, and you've just killed a ton of workers there. And you've just killed a load of workers there. And that, that tunnel there is so annoying because he just has to pop one quad and kills all your workers there. Whereas, yeah, uh, Moliere's got a bit of work to do here. Big push here from Vector. Bit of a pop there from Moliere. Tries to tries to hold the position and does actually. Takes out a number of quads. I think three quads there from Vector went down in total. Vector now bringing a load of RPGs and more quads. Takes down one of the quads there. Moliere pushes deep into his tunnel. Is that Rebel going to survive? It is. It's going to walk straight through the quad and survives. It's going to try to capture that. But there's got absolutely no chance of that being captured. Zero chance at all. It would have been better there to keep as a scout, I think. But I think at this point, Moliere is falling a little bit apart. Yeah, Vector is definitely adapted and improved in this game number two. Like, something like 50%, something like that. Like, the double arms dealer I like. But the balanced approach going for both the flanks and the mid I like. And he's won. He's winning the map control everywhere. He's not completely click-kicked Moliere off here. But this big attack going into the base now might actually just finish Moliere. Well, he has gone for two arms dealers himself. Does he have enough quads to hold this? Seemingly he does for now. Vector thinking about pushing again. Uh, I think there's still quite a few quads in that tunnel, though. Let's push up really close. No pop from Moliere yet. Has he even seen this position? He's actually gone for a counter attack up in the top, but he's running into a load of stealth tunnels. Not sure if Moliere will win that engagement or not, but I'm pretty confident the Vector is going to win this engagement down here. And with both of them arms dealers being camped, that's probably going to be GG again, I think. Now, every quad that comes out is just going to get completely mowed down. And this, this area has to be left. You have to go back and defend this. So yeah, Vector's definitely improved in this game number two on this map. That's just why activity and practice is, is so important. You just saw it there literally within the set. Um, yeah, now, now imagine that like times 100 in practice sets before this even took place. Then, then that's why activity uh, makes you makes you so good. It shakes off all the rust, makes you f uh, finesse all your build orders and stuff like that. And Vector, yeah, with a massive improvement there in game number two, was able to close out in six minutes and 40 seconds. 4-2 goes the score. Okay, jumping into the next match. We're on Farmlands of the Fallen. And up in the top right, we have Vector with the Orange China Nuke. Down at the bottom left, we have Molière with the Blue Jelly Demolition. Okay, what we're going to see here. Molière really likes these far away supplies, doesn't he? I, I don't actually mind that supply there being far away, but this one... Not sure I agree with that unless he's going to try some kind of a funky box, which I actually don't always recommend on these crates. It's generally quite hard to do, but maybe he assessed it out. Got Vector going for a forward supply. And then into a war factory. We've got a forward tunnel here, though. Two workers. The truck is going to find them both. Is it going to be able to crush both? Gets one. Gets two. Kind of poor control there from Moliere. Those could have 
probably even both survived with a bit of micro or at least severely delayed that truck. So yeah, to lose two workers straight away like that, not ideal. But nicely played by Vector, getting the crush. And then he's going to follow that up with the Battlemaster. And then straight away to deal it, GLA is under a lot of pressure because... Uh, yeah, without any forward any forward tunnel that the Battlemasters have to be fighting, the Battlemasters can just make their way all the way straight down to the base. I do wonder about these boxing skills again. Can a truck or a Battlemaster actually get in there? Uh, no technical veterans see here from Molière. Maybe he has uh, selected a Marauders. And as I say that, a Marauder pops out. So there has been a funky box here. Stopping the Battlemasters getting in. I've got a worker versus a dozer down in the bottom right. Terrorist here is going to get taken down by the Battlemaster. Got a worker here from Molière as well. But Vector has spotted it. I feel like Vector's just in a slightly higher level category. Or... Um, I don't know about in general, but at least in this set here that I'm seeing. The, the the map awareness, the build orders, the micro. Every tiny little thing just seems to be 10 to 20% better than what maybe even more than that. Maybe 30, 40% than what Moliere is doing. Moliere has gone for uh, Marauders though. If he gets a couple of scrapped up Marauders, could be very strong. Almost loses that one though. Three pops his Marauder. Terrorist is on the way to try and chase this away. Worker has gone inside of that for now. That middle tunnel got killed. Tech RPG down here. Kills the dozer. That dozer was already pretty dead though. Didn't need to hit it with that terrorist as well. And technically we're going to continue into the base. But there's a flamer and a couple of battle masters. Out trying to get some damage done. Wherever they go, they'll probably be able to get some good damage done actually. Just like a single tunnel or whatever. Or a single garrison. Not going to do that much when you've got a flamer there. There is a terrorist getting awfully close to these Battlemasters, though, but it's apparently not paying attention. Terrorist gets dropped off there, but actually gets killed by the Flamer. That technical almost went down. Flamer going to go to work on this section of the base now. It's a nice flame wall, actually, because a lot of stuff here. Marauder gets one scrap. Might be able to get two scraps here unless Vector is on top of the scrap deny. So far, no one scrap deny, and he's not actually moving his Marauders. Don't know where he's paying attention. Probably queuing up some quads because he's just seen these two helixes come out. He needs to start dropping down stingers instantly. Stinger here, stinger here. And you need to get some kind of map control as well because all of his map control is getting shut down. Like you need like a tunnel here, tunnel here, somewhere. But Vector's just going all out of aggression and I don't know if there's enough helixes. Sorry, enough quads to stop this. The helixes can just purely engage this. There's no need to run away or anything. Can just purely engage it, but the Battlemasters are here to support on the ground. Quad cannon going down, and I think uh, I think that's it. You know, I don't think Molière can do anything about that now. No matter what you make from there, now is going to get shut down by either the Helixes or the Battlemasters. Even if you made a quad from there, now the Helixes are still going to win the engagement. No stingers drop down whatsoever, and the arms dealer getting hit. Even that sneaky tunnel there gets stopped. Technical goes down to the mines. And yeah, just a really decent performance there from from Vector. All stemmed from that initial build order. Everything worked out perfectly. And I think as the set's gone on, I think his confidence has grown. The balance, the, the matchups have become more balanced. And Vector's like continuously improved as well, I think. This is a really, really strong performance here, as was game number two on Forest of uh, Camelot as well. And Molière, yeah, I'm afraid you're watching his last few moments. In the World Series 2022, everything is getting cleared up. And that's exactly what it is at this stage, is the clear up operation. Vector did not get hunted. He's dropping down a prop now. He's got his uh, CC up. And Molière has been defeated and kicked out of the World Series. Yeah, that's actually against what I thought. I actually thought Molière would win that. But I, you know when you haven't watched so much of a player... You just don't know the level properly. I've only seen like one or two replays here and there. Um, but yeah, you let me know your comments. What do you think about Vector? Do you think you'll get past his next round? I actually forget off the top of my head who he's going to face in the next round. But I always put the brackets somewhere in this video. So I'm sure you've had a look. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. GG, well played. And see you in the next one.